Hey guys, it's Catfish here again and welcome back to my channel. In this video, I will use science to find out what is the best close range weapon in the game. If you've seen my other research videos, you will know that according to science, a great close range weapon needs only two things. One, really fast kill speed, and two, it needs to have great hip fire precision because firepower means nothing if you miss all your shots. Now, for number one, we already have the data for that. We have the DPS data from when I multiply each weapon's single shot damage by the rate of fire. So really, all that needs to be done in this video is to find out what is the percentage accuracy of every gun's hip fire in the game and then multiply it by their DPS to find the new weighted hip fire DPS. Once we rank all the weapons by this new hip fire DPS, which takes hip fire accuracy into account, we will now know what is the best close range weapon in PUBG Mobile. In order to measure hip fire precision, I went into the training grounds and picked up each weapon in the game and ran around while holding them in order to maximize the reticle bloom of each weapon. This is to simulate the reticle bloom when you are strafing left and right while shooting an enemy at hip fire range. This is also done to keep all the weapons consistent and to make measurements easier to collect. Larger values means greater variation and therefore greater statistical significance. Also, in order to keep each weapon fair, no attachments were added to each weapon. I will talk more about how each attachment such as a barrel extender and a laser sight reduces hip fire spread later in the video. After tediously taking pictures of every weapon's reticle bloom, I imported all the pictures into my PC and then determined the diameter of the reticle bloom in the number of pixels. You see like here for the SKS, what I do, I just zoom all the way in like this about 400 and then I go down to about just halfway and then I only count the left side because the center reticle is going to stay the same no matter what so there's no point measuring the distance between here and here as long as you know the the uh what is it the coordinate of this one which is always 1365 you can see right there the x coordinate is always 1365 then all you gotta do is just measure where uh the left hand side is and you just do this point of minus this point times two for the full uh, full diameter of the reticle spread and the really tricky part is just finding out where exactly on this blurry blob of red would you count the left uh, left point now what i usually do as long as you keep it all consistent that's really what it matters i count the second like you can see where it's like red and like dark red and then gray and then start getting lighter i count right to the right of the gray you don't have to do it this way i do it this way for all my samples to keep it all consistent so you can see right here as i point it one two six two for this one so for this gun, which is the SKS, and then I type in, uh, where is it? One, two, one, two, six, two. And by applying the formula, again, like I said, because the center point is always one, three, six, five, then applying this formula, which is essentially this minus this one times two, but plus one. Uh, the reason why there's plus one is because if you look really closely here, there's really, there's no center pixel. So uh, it just so happens that the center is actually in between two pixels. So um, you add one because there's actually one extra pixel in there that's not counted. So that's how you would do that calculation. After we have done that, we can then rank every gun in the game by their reticle diameter, where it is revealed that the most precise weapons in the game while strafing without any attachments are P18C, P1911, P92, and the Uzi while the weapons with the worst hipfire precision in the game are Groza, MK14, and SLR. We can then take this reticle diameter one step further by converting this number into hipfire accuracy in terms of percentage of shots hit. To do this, we must first measure the diameter of a human chest area as this is the largest target and center mass of an enemy target. It is revealed that, at least on the iPad Pro 12.9 inch where I am conducting this experiment, that the enemy chest is exactly 79 pixels in length, which, if you have been paying attention, just happens to be the exact same length as the most accurate hipfire in the game while moving. This is either intentional or an extreme coincidence. Anyways, if we divide our reticle spread by 79 and then multiply our quotient by 100, we now know the percentage chance that our hipfire will hit our target. 
each of these numbers now represent the accuracy of your weapon at 5 meters while hip firing and strafing. Now, for the last step, all we need to do is multiply our hip fire accuracy with our chest shot DPS that we've already calculated to arrive at hip fire chest DPS. What this number means is, at 5 meters, assuming you are strafing left and right while shooting, with the accuracy of your weapon's hip fire taken into account, how fast does your weapon actually kill while hip firing without attachments? Ranking every weapon based on this parameter reveals that at 5 meters, to the surprise of nobody, the shotguns like the S686, DBS, and M1014 take the top spots because they simply just one-shot you. I mean, just look at that insane DPS. Right underneath shotguns, Uzi is the fastest killing hipfire gun in the game, which makes Uzi the best secondary weapon to have in PUBG Mobile as of the current meta, because it's such an accurate and fast killing hipfire weapon. Before we continue, lots of people have been asking me, hey Catfish, in all your research, what is the best close range weapon to use? Now, I do want to take a significant portion of this video to address this question once and for all. First of all, my answer to that has to be the Uzi. I've been saying that for years, and now we have the data to prove it. It is the fastest killing close range weapon taking accuracy into account. I also want to take a few minutes to talk about why I think the Uzi is more competitive than the UMP45 or the DBS. You see, many people think that the UMP45 or the DBS is the best close range weapon. And you know, they are very popular in classics and scrim matches, and they have a good point. UMP45 is many people's favorite choice because it's so universal and flexible. In fact, when I can't find an AR to use in an emergency, I often use the UMP45 as a makeshift AR because my gosh, it's just so easy to use. You can use it at close range, and to a certain extent, you can even use it as a pseudo AR at mid range. It's definitely one of my favorite guns to use in a game. The DBS is also very popular because, as you guys can see from the data, it is joint fastest killing hip fire weapon in the game, not counting the two shot 686. Now, while these two guns are very powerful and definitely some of my favorite weapons to use, in the context of competitive close ranged fighting, taking accuracy, range, and kill speed into account, I don't think either the UMP45 or the DBS is better than the Uzi. Let's first talk about why the Uzi is better than the UMP45. You see, people forget that an SMG is not supposed to be universal. It is not supposed to be flexible. That is what your AR is for. If you already have an AUG or an M416 that is insanely accurate from 15 meters up to 200 meters, there's no reason to waste a precious second weapon slot on a UMP45 that can kind of do the same thing as your AUG or M4. No, you want a weapon that does what your AR cannot do, and that is absolutely shredding people at ranges where your AR is uncomfortable. I'm talking about that 5 meters to 15 meter range. You see, under 5 meters, any weapon could hit every shot because you're just so close to your enemy. Uh, and past 15 meters, you'll just scope in anyways. So it's really about that tricky 5 to 15 meters range where ARs really struggle. Therefore, the reason why Uzi is better than UMP45 is because Uzi fills that role so much better. It's way more accurate at 15 meters hip firing, it fires faster, which means the chance for you to hit your target is increased, and it also kills faster at these ranges. For those of you who say that the Uzi cannot squad wipe compared to the UMP45, well, you're not supposed to squad wipe in one magazine. There is no gun in the game that can fight two people shooting at you simultaneously and win. Okay, good. And then Either way, in order to squad wipe, the smart thing to do is not just to stand still, decide that this is the hill you're gonna die on, and try to knock two or three people in one magazine. You are not going to win against a coordinated squad that rushes you all at the same time. No.
by the way, that right there is why I think the UZ is better than the DBS. DBS, if you miss your shots, you are basically dead. I was lucky enough that that person doesn't know how to aim. The correct way to squad wipe is to stay moving, try to split the enemy team up, and try to pick them off one by one. By doing it this way, you transform a 4v1 into 4 1v1s, and according to science, the best 1v1 weapon with range, accuracy, and kill speed taken into account is the Uzi. So there you have it. Now, I also think the Uzi is better than the DBS because unfortunately, where UMP45 is too flexible, DBS is, on the other hand of the extreme, too specialized. DBS sacrifices too much range and is too risky to use by being a single tap weapon. It's great for when you're camping corners and waiting for an enemy team to push you, but against a squad that is spread out and around 10 to 15 meters, you don't have the time to constantly switch back and forth between your DBS and your primary AR weapon to knock enemies at close range. That is why the Uzi is superior to DBS, because with an Uzi, you can knock the first person at 5 meters, reload, and then knock the second person at 10 meters, and then reload, and then knock the third person at, say, 15 meters. And it can do all that with just one gun. And because the Uzi is fully automatic, it is also safer to use in stressful situations where your fingers tense up from panic. Now, before I move on, I just want to once again reiterate that I think the UMP45 and DBS are great weapons. I just think that Uzi is like a perfect balance between DBS and UMP45. It has the range of UMP, but also has the hipfire killing speed of the DBS. So now you guys have my answer once and for all. Alright, so now back to the data. The greatest thing about working with spreadsheets is that you can sort by whatever parameter you want. If we wanted to look at what is the best close range weapon across all of PUBG Mobile, we can do that. However, if we sort this spreadsheet by weapon type, we can also determine the best hip firing weapon of each class. For ARs, it is a very close tie between the FAMAS and the Honey Badger, while the worst AR to hip fire is the M16. For DMRs, unsurprisingly, it is the MK14, while the worst is the MK12. For our light machine guns, unsurprisingly, it is the MG3 that is the best, while the M249 is the worst. And for pistols, to my surprise, the P1911 is the best, assuming you can tap fast enough, while the Desert Eagle is the worst. And for shotguns, the S686 and the DBS are the best, while the S1897 is the worst. For SMGs, Uzi is the best, while Thompson SMG is the worst. The reason I ignored the P90 is because there will be major changes to this weapon soon. In case you guys haven't heard, it will become an airdrop weapon that fires a historically accurate 5.7mm round, so it will basically be a weapon that deals nearly rifle damage but has SMG rate of fire. Looking forward to that. Also, if hip firing sniper rifles are your thing, then the best to use is a close tie between the AMR and the tactical crossbow, with the Mosin Nagan being the worst sniper and also the worst gun in the entire game to hip fire with. I will share this spreadsheet in the link in my description so you guys can download a copy and play around with it yourselves. Finally, before I end this video, there's one last thing that is on everyone's minds, and that is what exactly does each attachment do? in terms of increasing your hipfire precision. 
Well, I measured that by comparing the reticle diameter from the stock configuration of each weapon to the reticle diameter when I attach compensators, laser sights, tactical stocks, and a variety of other attachments. Afterwards, I started doing combinations, such as compensator plus laser sight, or laser sight plus tactical stock, or compensator plus tactical stock, or even all attachments included to study how exactly do the hip fire precision stack with each attachment added on top of another. And based on the data, I found out that the good news is the attachments do stack normally and not in some weird way that is impossible to calculate. For example, if a laser sight gives you 15% extra hip fire precision bonus, and let's say a compensator gives you 5%, then attaching both is just simply 15 plus 5 equals 20. And this is consistent across all weapons in PUBG Mobile. Unfortunately, that's where the good news ends, because to my shock and surprise, each attachment affects each weapon differently, even within the same weapon class. This means, even between the M416 and M762, which by the way are both assault rifles, a laser sight will give the M4 15% bonus, while only 14% to the M7. Or, for example, the laser sight gives UMP 13% hipfire precision bonus, but 15% to the MP5K. I tried this with various weapons, with various attachments, and the numbers are always slightly different, not too different, just off by 1 or 2%. In addition, compensators seem to give all ARs and DMRs 5% bonus hipfire precision, but only 4% to SMGs. So with all of this taken into account, I found out that the best way to keep this simple is that instead of measuring what each individual attachment does to each individual weapon in the game, which would take weeks or months of non-stop grinding, a better way is to just approximate the data. So here it is. Laser sight gives you anywhere between 13 to 15% hit fire precision bonus depending on which weapon you use. Cheek pad always gives you 10%. Tactical stock always gives you 2%. Every grip in the game always gives you 2%. Compensator gives you anywhere between 4 to 5% depending on which weapon you use. And also, barrel extender also gives you anywhere between 4 to 5%, which means there was never any reason to use barrel extender over a compensator. The people who claimed that an M416 with barrel extender somehow made their hip fire precision much better have been lying this whole time. It was all just based on rumors and myth. The data shows that barrel extender gives the same hip fire precision as compensator. Finally, attaching a scope or a magazine does nothing to help with hip fire precision. Alright, and that is pretty much everything. If you found this analysis helpful, please like and share the video. Not because I care about the views or the subs, but because I think it's important that people stay educated and up to date on information. If you think I made a mistake, or if you have a different take on this scientific approach, please do share your thoughts in the comments. If you like the content I put out and you wonder to yourself how you can help me out in my next video, consider joining my Discord using the link in the description below. I always share discoveries with my Discord community before I publish it for everyone else to see. Anyways, thank you for watching and I hope to see you guys in my next video. Peace out.